Welcome, everybody. Um, great that you're here. My name is Bernd Zimmermann, and with me is Tobias Reisbeck. We are the managing partners of Change Pioneers, uh, international ecosystem for organizational and leadership development. And today we want to show you a little bit about um, what has a mission statement to do with neuroscience. Um, and this could be of interest, not only in terms of um, if you want to craft a mission statement um, in, in your company, um, but also it gives you a little glimpse about our annual OD education garage. So if you're interested in an edu uh, OD education with Change Pioneers, um, you get some first-hand insights here into our running education. Um, and yeah, with that, um, um, we start with what is a mission statement. And Tobias, I hand over to you. Yeah, hi and welcome to today's session with respect to mission statement and, and uh, the neurobiology behind that. And um, as you see, we are on a mural board here. This is also where we do our education as Bernd uh, formally mentioned. So this is the way where we really interactively um, do our sessions and, and collaborate and elaborate on things. But today it will be about mission statement and um, mission statements, vision, and, and what does it to do with, with the neurobiology? And to start, we, we start with a definition. So a mission statement is uh, something a company with, with a mission statement, a company explains what the purpose and the, of the company is. So what values are important to the company, what goals are being pursued, and it describes an organization vision, mission, values, and also principles. So, and I think you all know the, the discussion or conversations about purpose, uh, purpose in organizations, uh, purpose-led leadership, how to identify with an organization via a purpose. And the purpose finds itself uh, again in, in a vision or in a mission. And the effects that, that companies want to have with that and that they really achieve, because this is also something that is uh, being scientifically be proven, uh, effects are desired and they are desired with respect to motivating people. Yeah. It's a basis for corporate goals and strategies. So you really break down from the top, from the vision uh, towards strategies and, and also capabilities and activities that you're doing. Um, you have with that um, clear and unmistakable corporate identity, because if you connect it from the top to the bottom, then it makes you unique. Otherwise, it stays like uh, as a poster on the wall and nobody knows uh, what to do about it and, or what, what it means. Huh? In the end, it's uh, decision support for executives, but also for other leaders in the management. It's also behavioral support for uh, uh, your employees. It gives you assistance in conflict situations. So it's a question, how do we deal with conflict? How do we resolve conflict? Huh? given our vision, and it also simplifies uh, personal selection. So a lot of companies have seen all these advantages uh, by doing these kinds of vision and mission statements, and you can do it in one way or in the other way. And I will show you the first way in the next slide and give us just some time to read through. And um, you can stop the recording at any time to really deeply into uh, to uh, deeply dive into that uh, strategy pyramid of customer of ours where there is growth vision mission corporate strategy this is one point and the second uh, i want to show you is by patagonia it's a patagonia uh, mission statement which has also purpose vision mission and values and I just also let it sit for some seconds and to go deeper into it, you can again stop the recording. Okay, but now you have seen those two uh, mission statements and a question would be now to burn. Uh, so what is the difference for you? What, what is the feeling behind it? How does it uh, appeal to you? How does it resonate? Yeah. Yeah, maybe to start with the with the first one, um, I find it um, kind of good in terms of very detailed. Um, 
um, it's it's very yeah st structured um, um, even got down to business plans and so on um, content wise it's um, ah, it's nothing new it's uh, somehow growth orientated customer uh, orientated customer should be in the center um, uh, multimedia shopping experience around around the clock seems a little bit like rock and roll so um, yeah it's not so motivating I would say um, it's um, it's more hard targets um, um, and and yeah it's it stays a little bit unclear to me to to be honest um, maybe if I would be in that company it would be a little bit clearer but I would not be super super excited somehow and not sure whether I, I'm really able to solve a conflict or make a business decision for myself uh, uh, around this or I, I would know that the decision is always about okay how can we maybe grow more as a company in terms of um, revenue and so on. And the second one, the Patagonia, um, is maybe not so detailed. Um, I mean, it's only this um, this smaller. Um, uh, maybe you can enlarge a little bit the picture. Um, it's it's a smaller uh, writing there, um, and there, I mean, it totally it totally hits me, um, and, and and I totally buy into it. Um, we have to save our home planet. Maybe I mean, this is just a topic of of in this year of the, of the last years and and the. In the couple of the future years, but I would buy into this. Um, um, also, make this world a place to to, to be sustainable for the um, next generation, um, and that we as a company use our resources to do that um, gives me, I think, uh, some direction at least. Um, and um, the the values are also very appealing. Um, and this last. Uh, where well, you're also not bound by convention. So to think out of that box, I, I would say still gives me creativity so that I can really be myself at Patagonia. So a little bit more broader, um, uh, maybe not so detailed uh, in, in some areas, I would miss maybe some direction, but overall much more appealing and emotional to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Bernd. Yeah, and as you see, these are qualitatively completely different um, mission statements and uh, the emotion is different as Bernd stated, and I just go down and, and show you what, what is happening in your brain when you are reading these kinds of mission statements. So these are some more slides that we want to uh, present to you in, in the OD garage. But what you see here, and this is the main part, it, it sits between your ears, uh, it's your brain, or not yours, but uh, a, a picture of a brain. And it's a picture of the brain where you have kind of made a cut uh, through the midline of the, of the head, and then you face to the left hand side so here is the front with the eyes here is the back and you're basically looking from inside to the outside of your right brain hemisphere and what you see here i, I have to explain some structures to you but i think you don't have to remember all of those um, but what you see here is the red reddish part the big stuff around here this is the so-called cortex. So this is the newest part of your brain. It, uh, it's the latest development in uh, evolution. And the cortex is um, concerned with, with everything that has to do with consciousness. So anything you do consciously, like talking, like acting, like thinking, like dancing, like uh, whatever you do, where you perceive yourself as... Uh, the as as the i behind uh, the actions so this is the ego that is represented with the cortex and anything you do in a conscious way then you have these parts of the brain and you see uh, a part of it in in violet I, I tell you later about that but these are older parts of the brain so older part means that they have been uh, developing only very, or have been developing very early in evolution. And they are called the brainstem, or sometimes you call it also uh, the reptile brain. And the brainstem is very old and it's all involved with unconscious processing of things. So anything that is happening unconsciously in your body is mediated by the brainstem. So for example, the heart rate, the day and night rhythm, the digestive tract, the steering of it, the arousal of the whole physiological system. This is mediated 
by the brain stem. And these are normally things you don't want to think about because they should happen um, automot uh, autonomously because you don't want to shut down your body by night when you go to sleep and kind of switch it back on in the morning. So that's the big difference between the cortex and the brain stem. And there's this area in violet. So this is part of the brain stem, which is called the, so, uh, the limbic system. And the limbic system is um, processing anything that has to do with emotions. And as you heard before, this is an unconscious assessment. So emotions at the first time are assessed in an unconscious way before they go into a conscious processing. So let's say you are facing this kind of um, mission statements that we had before. The first step that is happening is that you assess them in an emotional way. And there are only two questions that this emotional or the limbic system answers. Do I like this or don't I like this? And this is based, this assessment is based on all the sensory information and experience that you made throughout your life. And the answer is, do I like it or don't I like it? This is the first thing that you do. Only then the information goes into the cortex where kind of the visual processing is further performed and it's about motor planning. So what are, are you going to do as a reaction with respect to what you, uh, what you have been seeing? Now, it could be either you could think, uh, what a crap, it doesn't kind of grab me at all. Or the other hand, it could be, well, interesting, what, what, what does it mean? So this is um, what motor planning also means. And then here in the, in the front part of your brain, this is the brand, 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 new of, of the uh, part of the brain. There you kind of assess so what reaction could be to your behavior? So you did a motor planning, either you say, wow, people, it's great, or you say, wow, people, it's really crap. And then you assess this with respect to your own inner values, your own ethics, but also with respect to how other people could react to what you are saying about that. And only then, after this assessment has been done, one of the motor programs is executed, the information goes to the brainstem, there your mouth starts to say one or the other alternative. And very important here is that there's a very, very huge uh, influence of this emotional assessment on your effects assessment. So emotions play a really great role with respect, which alternative in action are you taking? But the other way around is only very little. So a rational assessment of something has very little effect on the emotional assessment. And therefore, uh, people say that we are basically emotionally being steered and less uh, uh, rationally. That's the idea behind. So emotion comes first and um, uh, and thinking comes second. And yeah, really two parts of the brain, and uh, Bernd will tell you a little bit about these different systems yeah. that we call um, mind and thinking. And exactly as you said, um, uh, emotions come first, uh, mind comes seconds. Um, I think this is also shown here in this slide nicely. Um, so, for example, if we look at the processing speed um, um, of things or the working speed um, of the mind and or the the reptile uh, brain, the the reptile brain with the feeling is much more quicker, 200 milliseconds, as the mind needs uh, 700 milliseconds to to work and um, proceed, uh, process uh, certain things. Um, information also in in the feeling uh, is parallel, so we can have uh, mixed emotions about things right um, or, or can uh, digest also two things at the same time and we will experience this in a second uh, as well as we know the mind not only male uh, persons can only think of one thing uh, at a time so the linear thinking um, of the mind is also I think quite known and so on and so on you see some some more differences here but we want to try this now out this first catching of emotions when you look at something so it could be a mission statement if you read it or what we want to try here um, is um, to look at um, 
at the um, at a certain picture. So take a second to the picture that Tobias is showing now and just think of your emotion. What comes up? How do you react before it hits the rationality of mind? Um, and what we hear normally from participants who look at these pictures is kind of exactly this two-foldedness, so this parallel thing. Uh, first, people often say, oh, great, sports, and yeah, I love it, haven't played volleyball in a long time already rationalizing um, what what the emotion is but it's like cool it's great it's uh, energetic and so on but um, some people are in the second thought they think think also about when they see this picture like oh danger my ankles if i look at um uh, if, at any here uh, pain that could arise um if i uh, somehow hurt myself playing the sport so we we kind of get these mixed emotions um, by people or these mixed messages Similar, if you look at the next picture, and again, a test for you, just if you look at this picture, what kind of emotions come up when you see this? And I give you a second. Don't think about it just from your unconsciousness, what kind of emotions come up? Maybe how, how do you and where do you feel them in your body? Um, and and what is it maybe what color do they have or what you know what is your um, um, state of arousal so some people again are saying very intimidated here very protecting um, so they kind of like it it's a feeling of, of safe place and so on that comes up other people also say well this looks a little bit dark this reminds me a little bit of sadness maybe of death um, so for some people it's it's n not such a pleasant picture um, but for other people as i said it's you know secure and uh, w safe being and so on and so I think you kind of get it. Uh, we we would have more pictures, um, but this is how your brain works. Um, first of all, you get catched emotionally. You can have then two kinds of emotions to it, right? Uh, first glimpse, second glimpse, and instantly our brain um, kind of deals or looks at f um, um, further experience or experience in our past that we had, and this is then how we judge uh, on on a certain picture or on a certain uh, topic in front of us or a certain person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, over to yeah. you, Tobias. <laughs> Great, thanks. Exactly, and as 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 I said before, and and as you've seen uh, now with, with the pictures here, therefore it's so important that we, when we go back to the mission statements, that we craft them in a way that our limbic system says, "Wow, that's cool." Only then, also, your conscious brain later will be able to say yes. But because because. When, when you say, oh, I don't like this on an emotional level, and you saw it before, 200 milliseconds, before it gets into the conscious processing, then the chance that somebody is liking the mission statement will be really low. So you have to take care that the emotional uh, impact of this mission statement will be positive. And now if we look at this, um, how should this be? How should the... Uh, uh, the quality of the emotion be, we have this uh, this um, this notion of affect balance, because if you look at something and and you say you like it or you don't like it, it's like you have a continuum that goes from oh I don't like it at all towards neutral to I like it a lot, but that's not true for the brain. The brain has two um, structures that on one hand, signal the negativity of something. That's a so-called amygdala. It's a part of the limbic system. The amygdala says, if there is an experience, there is no negativity in it, or if there is a maximum negativity in it. So from zero to 100. And on the other hand, you have the so-called nucleus accumbens. He is mediating the positivity of an experience. So on a scale from zero to 100, it's perhaps 70% or more positive. So this also explains why you can have those mixed feelings, like somebody's being promoted to a higher management level. So it's great because you there's a better status, there's more money, there's the car, or, or whatever there is, uh, more appreciation. But on the other hand, he says, well, it's still more work, it's less family, it's uh, less uh, work-life balance, and therefore, um, you have these mixed emotions. And this is only possible because you have these two systems, the amygdala for the negativity and the nucleus accumbens. 
And the idea would be also to look at those um, uh, uh, mission statements with this respect, how much negativity does it elicit in your limbic system? And this should be negative. You can test this. There are tests that, that we can provide you with. Um, and on the other hand, it should be a highly positive, at least 70%. And if there is a ratio of zero negativity and plus 70% positivity, then you have a really great chance that people love your mission statement. And this is how uh, these kinds of, of neuroscientific findings can help you to craft great and powerful and emotionally binding um, mission statements and visions. So this is a short um, clip or short point of, of, of information out of this whole OD garage that is trying to combine these findings out of neuroscience with what we know in OD. So, yeah. Bernd, what, what? Yeah, uh, no, I, we're at the end. So if you like this session a lot, nuclear accumbens, and dislike it little, um, leave us a comment, uh, hit us up on our website or join us on LinkedIn. Um, and if it's also the other way around, please also let us know. We grow by getting also feedback. Um, and yeah, we hope it was interesting for you and um, hope to see you in one of the next sessions. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.